Hello everybody, welcome to part 6 of this Farming Plots tutorial. We're gonna get right into it. Let's go to Object Models and create a new one called Dead Plant. And the model that you select isn't really going to matter all that much. I'm going to choose this one. And to make it look dead, I am going to reduce the amount of green So now it looks kind of brown-ish, and that looks pretty dead, so I'm going to save that. Now let's create the scripts. We're going to create a series of scripts for this ability right here. This is the ability we created in part 5. So let's go to the script editor and create a new script called... All days plus one. Now what this is going to do is add one to the days past variables. It's also going to determine if a plant is dead. By checking the watered condition or the watered flag, we're going to create a condition. It's going to check the flag called watered1 equals off. So this means that the, the plant is not watered. If it's not watered, then data variable dirt1 equals. I'm going to choose an arbitrary number, and this arbitrary number is going to represent the dead plant. You can choose any number as long as it's not an existing thing. Don't choose a value that you're currently using, like for example, number 3 represents mushroom seeds, number 4 represents turnip seeds, number 5 doesn't represent anything, but it could. It could represent a new type of vegetable that I might include in my game. I would recommend that you choose a relatively high number so that you can reserve the numbers, these numbers, for other vegetables and fruits and so on and so forth, if that makes any sense. I'm going to choose 50 because 50 seems like a nice rounded number. Now remember that you did that. Remember the number and remember that the number represents the dead plant. So 50 is the dead plant. I'm going to copy this condition and put it right down at the bottom. Instead of saying watered1 equals off, it's going to say watered1 equals on. So that means that the plant is watered, which means the plant is alive and well. Right in the middle, we're going to say data uh, variable days past one equals days past one. Plus one. Now you're going to copy all of this and paste it right at the bottom. And you're gonna create multiple instances of these lines of code for as many plots as you have. So I only have two, so I'm just gonna paste it once and that'll be it. And also we have to change the flags and variables. Instead of watered one, it's gonna be watered two. Instead of dirt one, it's gonna be dirt two and so on and so forth. So do that for every single dirt event that you have. And also, days past one is days past two. Make sure you change both of these, otherwise it'll cause some bugs if you don't. Once you're done doing that, let's update that and create a new script called now harvestable 
This is a script that is a little bit difficult to explain. I don't know how to explain it because it deserves some kind of context, which I can't provide at this point because we haven't created the script that calls this script. <clears throat> this script is going to be called by a parent script, which we haven't created yet. The first line of code is script branch sort. And we're going to select temp variable 2. We haven't defined what temp variable 2 is. And I'm just going to say right now that temp variable 2 represents the dirt events or the plots. So temp variable 2 value 1 would be dirt 1, if that makes any sense. Let's go to script branch apply if 1. So like I said, 1 is dirt, dirt 1. You can sort of think of it as, uh, you know, the number here where it says apply if number is 1. You can sort of think of that as the event itself. Uh, dirt 1, and then apply if number is 2 would be dirt 2, and so on and so forth. And we're going to go to data, flags, harvestable 1 equals on. And then go to script branch to end, copy these three lines, and you're going to copy and paste for as many plots or dirt events that as you have. So I only have two, so I'm just going to create two of these. Make sure to change the number here, where it says apply if number is. Change that, and also change the flag to harvestable2, or the appropriate flag. And that's pretty much it for that. Basically what this does is it makes it so that you can harvest the plant so that you can interact with the plant, and once you harvest it, of course, it'll end up in your inventory, and all of that. We're done with this script. Now, let's create a new script called Plant Model. This script is going to determine what kind of model the plant has. So if you plant a mushroom, seed, then of course the model is going to be a mushroom. A mushroom model. We are going to say script branch sort temp variable zero. We have already defined temp variable zero in a previous part of this tutorial. Temp variable zero, zero is basically the tool you can sort of think of it as uh, ID numbers for different tools. Like, for example, number one is the hoe, number two is the watering can, number three, in my case, is the mushroom seed. It might be different in your game. And number four in my game is the turnip seed. So what we're going to do is go to script branch apply if three. Now, like I said, number three is the mushroom seed, so this is basically asking, is it a mushroom? So let's go to script branch, and condition, variable, temp variable one. Temp variable 1 is the amount of days that have passed. Now this is where you get to set up how many days you want the plant to, to grow until it becomes fully grown. So this is totally up to you. This is, you know, you can set it up to be whatever amount that you want. If you want it to grow in a matter of one day, then it would just be one. If you want it to grow in a matter of two days, then you could set it up as two. I think mushrooms could be grown in one day, so I'll set it up as one. 
So right in the middle of that condition, if one day has passed, then the event model is going to change into a mushroom. So let's go to events, effects, model, object, mushroom. We're going to call the script that we created called now harvestable. So now it becomes harvestable. And branch to end. Script branch to end. Now what you're gonna do is copy this whole thing, apply if number is three, all the way down to to oh I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Okay, this is really, really important. Make sure that the to end is after the condition end. Sorry about that. That would have caused some serious bugs right there. So this condition end is a ta is uh, this right here. So this to end, all it really does is it goes from here to here. You're gonna copy this branch to end up to where it says apply if number is three, copy that, and then paste it inside of the branch. You're still inside of it, but after where it says to end, you're just gonna paste it. And then you're going to change the numbers appropriately, so instead of apply if number three, it's going to be number four. Number four is a turnip. So, turnip seeds, I think, could grow in, I don't know, let's just say two days. Why not? So the model, of course, would be a vegetable. Now what you could do, this is totally up to you, this is totally optional, you can copy this condition and paste it. Uh, where it says temp variable 1 equals 2, that's the amount of days that have passed. You can copy that, paste it, you can say if one day has passed, and you can change the the height. It's totally optional, you don't really have to do that, but you can if you want to. Let's see, I'll make it 12, I guess. I don't know. And then down here. It'll be 16. I gotta do the same thing for the mushroom, because right now the mushroom is right inside of the soil. So it has to be 16, I think. 16 out of 16. That should be right on top of the soil. And also the model has to be in the condition too. Or if you want to, you could put it up here. This this line of code right here where it says uh, event effect event effects object model change. Copy that. You can delete it and paste it right up here so that these two conditions both are Actually, wait a minute. No. That might cause a bug. I'm gonna paste them right inside of the conditions, just in case. Because that might cause a bug, I'm not sure. Alright, so you're gonna continue to do this for every single type of vegetable or fruit that you decide to create in your game. So again, you just copy... You can do the same thing up here. Uh, copy apply if all the way down to to end. And then go down... Paste it after to end, but before branch end. Make sure you're inside of the branch. And instead of 3, I'm going to change it to 50, because 50 is a dead plant. you got to make sure that you set up the conditions for the dead plant, too. Set up the model for that. Now, let me see. There is no condition 
right, right here where it says condition temp variable 1 equals 1. It really doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter how many days have passed. I'm going to delete this condition and change the model to a dead plant. Also, it might be worth changing these conditions. I just thought of something. I, I thought of a possible bug that might occur. So I would have to say... Um, let me see. For, for the turnip that is one day old, the condition checks to see if it's... Yeah, that's right. E equals one. Okay. But for this one right here, this might cause some bugs, because what if you water it and then go to the next day after it had been two days old? You know what I mean? Like, let's say you grow your turnip. It's two days old, it's fully grown, and then you water it again for whatever reason, and then you go to the next day. Well, then it's going to turn into a seed. You understand what I'm saying? Because... Because this condition says equal to, not greater than or equal. So we want to make sure to change it. Change it to greater than or equal to two to just ensure that that, that bug does not happen. So that if, if for whatever reason the player decides to water a fully grown plant and then go to the next day, it'll still be alive. <laughs> I don't know if I'm making any sense, but... Okay, at the very end, outside of the branch, after where it says branch end, we're going to put a few things here. Uh, events, effects, transparency, 0%. Time, 0. Frames. Events, movement, bypass members, yes, enable. Events, movement, vertical move. Sixteen, I guess. Sixteen out of sixteen. I don't know. I don't know if these three lines of code are necessary, honestly. But my note in my notes, I'm looking at them right now. My notes have these three lines of code. I'm not really sure why they're there, but um, I'm guessing it's as a precaution just to ensure that the event is visible and to ensure that you can walk into it and to also ensure that it's right above the soil. We're done with this script. We're going to create a new script called seed control. This is the master script in, in a kind of weird way. Uh, we're going to call different scripts, but before we do that, we have to define different variables, uh, the temporary variables. Let's go to data variable, and then go to temp variable 0. Temp variable 0 equals dirt 1. Okay, just like that. I'm going to copy that and paste it. And I'm going to change temp variable 0 to temp variable 1. And that is going to equal days past 1. I'm going to copy that, paste it. Temp variable 2 is going to equal 1. Temp variable 2 like I've explained before, is the dirt events. So temp variable 2 equals 1, that just means that it's turning its attention to dirt 1. The event, dirt 1. And we're gonna change the control, event control, change 
New event. Seed one. Let me see if I can find that. Seed one. And then we're going to call two scripts. We're going to call seed model. And we are going to also call plant model. All right, so here's the deal. It gets the plant number from dirt one. Let's say dirt one is a mushroom. Well then, dirt one would be equal to three. And since temp variable zero is getting that information, temp var variable zero is now equal to three, if that makes any sense. It's basically asking, what is this? Is this a mushroom? Is this a turnip? Is this a potato? And then this one down here, temp variable one, is getting the amount of days that have passed for that particular event. It's asking, how old is this plant? How many days old is it? And then this one is asking, what event is it? Is it the first event? Is it the second one or the hundredth event? This one is simply changing the event to seed one. We're going to take control of it. The reason why we're taking control of it is because we want to change the model. We want to change the model of that into either a seed or some kind of plant, whether it be a potato or a strawberry or whatever. If it's a mushroom, then it takes the shape of a mushroom. If it's a turnip, then it takes the shape of a turnip. So seed model, of course, is a script that we created earlier, and it will change seed one, in this case, into a seed if, if it's a seed. If it's not a seed, then it's gonna go to this script and say, okay, is it a plant? If it's a plant, then it'll change it into a plant. Does that make sense? I hope so. We're gonna copy this. It's a lot of information to take in. But, yeah. <laughs> Let's copy all of these lines of code, paste it right at the bottom. You're going to do this for every single dirt event or plot. Uh, that you have, but you're gonna change the uh, variables. So dirt one becomes dirt two. Days past one becomes days past two. For this one, the number one becomes number two. You're gonna change seed one to seed two, and so on and so forth. So just keep copying and pasting until you get all of your dirt events. All right, we're almost done. Uh, not really. Uh, let's <laughs> let's create a new script called next day. Finally, this is the one we're looking for. This is the final script for this uh, video. We're gonna call a couple of scripts. One called all days plus one. That was the first script that we created, by the way. So it's going to add a day or change it into a dead plant, and then it's going to determine what kind of model it should take. Uh, so seed control. Seed control is the is the script that takes control of an event and changes it into a specific model. And then we want to refresh those events. The best way I know how to do that is simply to teleport the party. I know that seems kind of weird right off the bat, but yeah, that's how I did it. So I'm going to change the location to farm and then put them, you can put them anywhere. It doesn't really matter. I'll put them right there on the farm. That's all you need to do for the script. It's pretty simple. Now we have to create a system event for that particular script. So go to events. Let's call it next day. 
It's a system event, so for the type, choose system. For the apply, it's going to be the script called next day. Next day, you can think of next day as the master script because it's connected to all these other scripts, all four of these scripts right here that we created. Let's save that. We have to create a direct effect. Go to game, direct effects, create a new direct effect called next day. Go to advanced, go to result, success. In the success field, choose next day. This is the system event that we created. And then finally, finally, go to e abilities, next day, uh, go to the custom tab, right here where it says direct effect, choose next day. And save that. Now, we're not quite done. <laughs> there is one more thing that we have to do. I'm actually going to do that in another video. This took a lot longer than I hoped it would, so I apologize for that. I'll see you in the next part of this tutorial. Thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing. I'll see you in part 7.